God is good. Amen. That's my brother. All right, Mark 5. Amen. Y'all know the series on YouTube is, um, is, is very destructive. Amen. That three series of your problem is witches. And when you preach on stuff like that, witches show up. And they get to work in their magic and we send it back. I don't accept your witchcraft. I send it back. Amen. The Bible says, suffer not a witch to live. Amen. So we we go into violent spiritual warfare. Amen. Against them. Praise the Lord. All right. We're going to, I'm going to follow up on, the, on that message. Amen. From Mark 5. I didn't get my worship in, so it's going to be tough. Amen. Be tough. Give my sons a hand. Amen. Appreciate that. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all, son. Appreciate y'all. Amen. I, I want to show you from Mark 5 the how Satan operates. Amen. I want to show you how he operates. Amen. You're going to have to, to say fight. Amen. You must fight. Amen. This is not a, a spiritual walk that is easy. I think people have lied when they said, just get Jesus and everything will be all right. I think they lied. I don't mean that he's not everything. I mean, you got to learn some things after you get him. Amen. You have to become a disciple, a follower of Christ. It's not enough to go to church. You must be a follower. Say a follower. Amen. A follower is, is, is somebody that's dedicated, committed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So you must become a follower a follower of Christ and one of the things you must understand that when you get Christ all of your devilish stuff will be revealed the stuff in your family the demonic strongholds everywhere Satan has set up uh, uh, something in your life in your family that will be revealed after you get Christ this is the reason why before you had Christ your life was probably just about smooth and you wasn't going through too much spiritually say spiritually but after you got Christ, you start having word dreams and battles and mind battles and attacks. Where did that come from? That came from the demons that lay dormant until you got Christ. Say amen. They're not going to manifest until they're challenged. And when you got Christ, you challenge them. Say amen. So they came out and began to attack you to, 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 to keep you from the destiny in Christ. Come on, say I have a destiny in Christ. Amen. So a lot of your warfare, say warfare, this is a word you must get used to as a Christian or a follower of Christ or a believer of the most high. I don't know. We got so many names now. I don't know which name y'all want me to use, but I just call him the name that I called on when I was lost and sick and in sin and it has never failed me yet. So I'm going to stick with what I know. Say amen. Don't let nobody bamboozle you with this new stuff. I like the old M&Ms, the colors that I realize. Don't be coming with no psychedelic m and &M. I know it ain't what I'm used to. I'm going to stick with what I know. Say amen. 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 You have to understand that Satan's goal is to move the ancient boundary or landmarks. Say amen. He moves the landmarks, meaning that he tries to get the next generation to move away from what the last generation walked in. Are y'all there? With this new stuff. Anything too new reminds me of new age. And then that reminds me that it's getting away from the old foundation, which is Christ. Now, y'all there? So, uh, let me see if I can give you a title today. I'll work a title out for you today. Amen. <laughs> you got to realize we were at the land yesterday. Elder Grant got me hurt yesterday. <laughs> Elder Grant got the fastest thing in the world. I don't know where he got that at. But this four-wheeler was very fast, amen? I can't remember what happened. I really don't remember. I just remember the hospital. I remember that. I was in the hospital this morning. Amen. And I'm here now. Amen. You see, some of y'all never make it to your destiny because you'll let a hangnail stop you from pressing your way. Say amen. You got you to gotta understand that, 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 that destiny is about press. Say press. press. Amen. That means that even those, even though you may be going through something yourself, amen, people still need your anointing, need your ministry, need your strength, need your power. Are you there? So you press. Come on, say press. press. Amen. All right. Are y'all in Mark 5? 
Are y'all Mark 5? I want to, this, 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 this word is called revealing the enemy. Come on, say revealing the enemy. Amen. Surely you don't go to church just to have a pat on the back. My focus, if I'm going to get up at nine or eight and start getting ready, say amen, and on and put on clothes and many times skip breakfast, I'm going, I want to know how to deal with this rough stuff, spiritual atmosphere I have in my life. I'm not coming to play games. Are you there? So I know y'all was playing games because the worship was on, not on the high level. That's why I know. Amen. So if you don't get it in worship, I'm going to give it to you with this word. Amen. So when you don't worship, the word gets tough. Amen. It's like a tough cut of flank steak that hurts your back teeth. This is today. This is what you're going to get today. Amen. Say reveal the enemy. Amen. Say reveal the enemy because he is hiding in your life. Say hiding. He comes out right before you about ready to reach the next level. Are y'all there? Some of y'all fighting the spirit called uh, the spirit that shows up when you're on the edge of breakthrough. Right when you're about ready to go to the next place, a door opens, a better job. Say amen. Something happens to you and it's like you get sabotaged only to fall back where you was at first. Are you there? Are you there? And so you must understand that uh, uh, say, Lord, reveal what I'm really fighting. Remember, the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So it's not people. If you focus on people, you lost. Your battle is spiritual. It's in an, it's in an invisible world. Are you there? That you cannot see, but that is as real as this world. As a matter of fact, the Bible says the things we see are made up of the things we don't see. So the invisible world is more real than the realm we are in now. You can't see the invisible world until the mechanisms of this body that tunes you into this world are shut down. That was a good word within itself. That's why when you go to sleep, you start seeing that other world. Are you there? Because the mechanisms of this body that block that realm, it's sort of like the melanin that blocks the UVs. That's what the mind is in the body. It blocks the signals from that world as long as you are awake. Oh, y'all don't... But when you go to sleep and the, and the body is asleep and in its recharge mode, then the spirit is able to experience that other world. I don't want to go too deep into dreams today, but this is the reason why dreams are the barometer or the, or the thermometer of your life. Are y'all there? Now, so, so say, Lord, reveal. This is what you really fight. This is, say, say I got my own fight. The Bible says when a man is, 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 go to James, before I, before I get there, go to James, chapter, chapter one. James, chapter one, because I want to show you, say, say, what am I fighting? This is what fought your daddy, your mama, grandmama, granddaddy. If they were not spiritual and had true discernment, they spent their whole life fighting the wrong fight. This is the reason why people are getting divorced. They're fighting their spouse. They don't know that's not the fight. The fight is the spirit that's motivating you all to fight. Say amen. If you stop focusing on them, that's why the Bible says you're not wrestling. As a matter of fact, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty that means that it's not a it's not a natural thing if you stop looking at them and go behind them and begin to bind up that spirit that make her attitude so nasty bind up that spirit that make him so lazy y'all don't want to talk about this then you will start seeing some progress but as long as you focus on flesh you're going to lose the battle the minute you see flesh you lost because the battle is always spiritual come on say spiritual Look at James. Are y'all there? I want to show you. Give me my title again. Revealing the enemy. I want to show you how to. I want to show you the progression. Amen. Say progression. Look at this verse. Uh, James 1. Let's look at verse 13. Are you there? You will never be free of your warfare or of your fight until you have learned to acknowledge Things that you are doing that is transgressing the law of the Most High. 
you'll never be free until you learn to acknowledge. Say amen. The Bible says if a man acknowledges his sin, he recovers his own soul from the snare of the enemy. Many of you all who've been fighting for years and years, one, you have one problem, you won't acknowledge it. This is the problem with this American way of keeping up appearances and, and, and dressing right and looking right and wanting everybody to think you okay. Say amen. You don't be honest. And without honesty, you cannot be delivered. Deliverance is deliverance comes when a person acknowledges that it is me. Say amen. This is what anointed preaching does. It causes you, it, 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 it lights up you. So you see, it's not my mother and it's not my, my brother or my father, but it is me. The problem is, is that uh, Satan will keep you bound by keep you blaming. Oh, that's a good word. He keep you, that's, that's a better word than y'all said something. He keeps you bound by keeping you blaming. It's not your wife. Because it's an oxymoron to say it's your wife when you chose that wife. The Bible says God brought Eve to Adam and he said, this is bone of my bone. That means he chose. So for me to say she's the problem, it means that I'm the problem because I chose the problem. Now if you chose it, you get the, you get the word out. And you take a, a, a rag and you mix it with the water and you begin to wash that woman until she becomes spotless. Say amen. Oh, you know, y'all want this or not? No, it's, 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 it's not your husband. Because remember, you said God sent them. This is why being super deep will bite you later on. Being super spiritual. You remember when you went to your people and you quickened? Oh, the Lord. Oh, that is haunting you now because if I was your people, when you walked to me saying, I don't know if it's of God, I'll go. <laughs> Quicken on you. Because that is what you did to sell what you wanted to do. That's why you should never put God on stuff. It's easier to back out if you just say, I did it, I said it. But when you put God in it, now you're getting into prophetic and prophecy and you done manipulated folks with the word God and they gonna harm you when you decide that's like the Bible says no man builds a house without counting the cost when they see you ready to vacate the project they gonna mock you don't be mad when they start mocking you because remember you quickened you spoke in tongues and quickened and ran around come on got everybody on board and you didn't even know the brother's past. You didn't know what kind of woman it was. You went strictly off of feeling and emotion that you, told, that you said was faith. Oh, y'all don't want this. Ooh, ain't that a whole Ooh. Say amen. Are y'all there? What was my last point before that? Come on, I need y'all help. I was in an accident. <laughs> You'll never be free till you learn to, are y'all there? You'll never be free till you learn to acknowledge, amen. The calling has nothing to do with pain. I learned a wise word from a wise woman in the Lord. She said, pain is, in, pain is inevitable, but misery is optional. That means you can, you're gonna go through pain, but you can decide whether you're going to be miserable in it or not. That's why Paul said, I thank myself happy. He wrote that in a prison cell. Paul said, bring me my coat. I'm cold. The next letter he wrote, he said, y'all forgot it. But he still, in all of it, he said, I thank myself happy. So, 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 so misery is optional. So you don't got to have no nasty attitude because you're going through something. That's optional. Are you there? All right, are y'all James 1? Now, I want to show you something because you know what we're missing in this day and age and even in the church? We're missing something called personal responsibility. That could it be you are where you are because you chose what you chose? Talk back to me. You are where you are because you chose what you chose. 
when we begin to acknowledge our choices, then we begin to understand how I got here, and then I begin to make better choices. But as long as I run from the accountability of what I chose, I'll keep making the same mistake. That's for somebody. That's why you keep getting the same person, because you're running from the fact that you choosing them. Amen. Come on, talk to me. You chose that. You knew they was crazy. You chose it. Because when you look at people, you have an innate ability not to see them, but you see what you want. And you fall so in love with what you want that you fail to see all that comes with the package. Oh, what am I getting on this for? This wasn't even where I was going. Are y'all there? Get out of their eyes and stuff and look at the whole thing. Meet they mama and they daddy because I need to know where you came from. I need to understand who your people is because who they are, that's who you will be. I need to see what kind of curses is on your family. Just talk to me. Don't be talking to me about no superficial stuff. Was you raped? Was you molested? I didn't know why you ain't going to be able to trust me. I need to understand my warfare with you, so I'm going to ask you some real stuff. Get out of their face and get out of their bed. Oh, God. And talk to them for real. Because once we make these choices, we try to throw it off as if we don't know how we got here. You ever talk to people like that? They be 50. I just don't understand. I don't know why I love me. I don't know why I got here. I don't understand why I'm here with you. And you just look at them like, how is it that you 50 and don't understand? You don't want to know. Somebody tried to tell you. You know who told you? The boss that fired you. You don't believe it, that was, that was wisdom of the Lord when he tried to tell you. You know why I'm firing you? Because you keep coming in late. Yeah. When well, now the devil's attacking me. It ain't the devil. Are y'all there? It ain't the devil. I rebuke the time clock. You know, we use faith silly. I've seen people, I've seen people sit down and eat like a, the worst fattening meal, and then before they ate it, they prayed to rebuke the calories. <laughs> I'm a rebuke the, I remember my brother prayed over the food. He said, Lord, we rebuke the calories. I said, but how you gonna rebuke the calories? The calories is in the food. What now that common sense of wisdom would have said, brother, don't eat that. Count the calorie. No man can't go. <laughs> count the cost. Now, why didn't he count? Now, he didn't, he didn't want to count the calorie or see what he couldn't and shouldn't eat. He just wanted to rebuke the eat. See, that's the easy way out. Y'all there. See, I want to sow a seed and pray for the harvest to fail. Instead of not sowing a seed. The Bible says, as long as the earth remains, there'll be seed time. Harvest time. What a man soweth, that, that what I just said kills all your excuses of why you where you are. What a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Oh, Lord. So no man sows good, and you're not going to put in good things and get back thorns. You're reaping what you sow. Oh, Lord. See, I told y'all, when, when, you, when your worship is down here, the word is coming like a, just, a, just a straight razor. Say Amen. So could it be you got what you sold? Amen. Are y'all there? Amen. Okay, let's go here. Now I'm going to try to get y'all in James. James 1. What are we looking for? Say personal, personal. Responsibility. responsibility. What was the name of the word? Revealing the enemy. But the enemy ain't the devil in this case. What is your real enemy? What's your enemy? Your enemy is your presumption. Meaning you assume things without the correct information or without foresight. The ability to see a decision walk through down the road. Like I'm like I'm not like like most of the problem is you make an emotional decision based on an emotional high. Wanting to get a, it's almost like a junkie that does not think about what the drug's going to do to them. They only want the high. 
So you live your life making emotional decisions for the high. Let me give you a point. Have you ever seen a, these girls that have a baby because they like when the baby was real little and cute and cut and all they can remember was the smell of that lotion and the baby wipe? They, that's all they remember. But they make that decision and they forget that this little thing. And then once that newness wore off, they want the same feeling again. They in love with the high, not the product of the decision. They in love with the feeling. Are you there? Can we talk? So say, Lord, Lord reveal the enemy. Reveal Amen. You're not going to like it because slowly you're going to look in the mirror and see it's not as much Satan as it is your presumption. Say my presumption. Amen. You know how many calls we get people say, I'm just ready to up and move to your city. What? You don't even know if I like you. I may not want to pass to you. I may not like you. Oh, ain't no come as you are. I don't know you. You could be a wolf. I don't know who you are. But they think they just come and just, and I'm sitting there in my mind saying, that is presumption. Are you there? Now that, per, that tells me all I need to know about that person. When they say stuff like that, I can tell you, I can go down the list. They, they, they probably been to multiple jobs. They probably break relationships. They're running from something. They're in poverty because poverty cannot, a poverty is the product of instability. Oh, y'all didn't want that. Come on, did y'all want that or not? I can read it in James, but I'm not going to do it, but I'll tell it to you. See, the Bible says that when a man is unstable, he is unstable in all his ways. Let not that man think he shall receive anything from the Lord. The reason why instability is so is such a whole problematic is because the Lord sends your blessings where you're supposed to be. Unstability will have you move, but the blessing was coming there. That's why you need to learn to endure and, get, and, 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 and develop patience to stay in a hard place where the blessing is coming. Are y'all there? So you spend your life starting over. Say starting over. Now, let's go to this. I'm, let me get this word in y'all. Let me try to get this out. Are y'all there? Look at verse 13. I want to help you. Say 13 is my verse. Because 13, say it, will take away all my excuses. And don't, see this generation do not like that. We do not like that. Now I do believe in generational curses and the Bible even says that uh, the sins of the fathers pass down to the children, even to the third and fourth generation. So there are things that we are fighting. Uh, let me say it better. There are things that are confronting me from my mother's and father's decision. But those things confronting me are tempting me to do what they did. Because unless, if I never do what they did, those things are unlawful to me. But they confront me to drink like they were drinking or to start fornicating like they were fornicating. And then the curse will light. The curse without a cause shall not come. Talk to me. So the goal is for these spirits that my mother and father didn't deal with to tempt me to do what they did. So they reestablish the stronghold of the last generation in my generation. Is this too deep? Is this too deep? So what I need to do is be aware and say recognize. And that's what I want to reveal to you, because if you don't understand your enemy, you will live a life of defeat because you'll be swinging at the wrong thing and you will never turn on yourself because you are your worst enemy. Come on, say, I am my worst enemy. No matter how much Satan is doing, Satan can only tempt. That's what he does. You have to, you have to receive that signal and operate out of it. Are you there? Y'all ready? Verse 13. It says, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Are y'all there? For God, so stop making the stop coming to people saying God said. And then 
after you get your feelings hurt, you indict God again by saying, well, now I think God is saying something else. No, sir. He's not schizophrenic. That's why I say stop saying God said anything. Just do what you going to do. It's easier to back out when you don't put God in it. Say amen. amen. People that say God said all the time, they are manipulators. Yeah. <laughs> they have no true integrity, so they're using something greater than them to convince you about them. But when my word is good, I don't need to say God said, I said. Because I'm telling you, my word is good. And if it don't work out, don't blame God, blame me. <laughs> Never let nobody marry you or come to you with marriage talking about God told me that Negro going to hurt God when it get hard. The same God that he, that he was listening to would tell him she ain't the one. Are y'all there? No, the Bible says a man chooses. Oh, y'all didn't want to. Um, y'all talk. A man chooses a wife. You don't need no prophecy. A man chooses. The Bible says that God put Adam to sleep, created, took a rib, created the woman, and brought her to Adam. God did not say, this is your wife. Adam looked at her and said, she is bone of my bone. He, he chose her and he even named her. So there was no mistake. This is why, now what happened when they sinned? Adam said, it was the woman you gave me. That's why it was important for God not to say, this is your woman, because he going to try to blame God. No, it's not. Are y'all there? A man chooses a wife. Why am I getting on this? Lord, help me. Because what you want to happen is you want a person to stand by their decision. Don't be all spiritual with me. Because how spiritual are you going to be six months from now? We're going to be up in here coming off the top row with the suplex and the arm bars and all that. It ain't going to be spiritual. Say man, You chose it. Oh, this is hard in this generation to make them stick by their choices. Are you there? Oh, what a good word that is. Even if y'all ain't saying nothing. Well, I didn't come talk about demons. I am. <laughs> Talking about the demon that motivates you to be unstable and say God sent you somewhere and then say the same God said go. No, sir. You're not going to indict my God. It's you. An unstable man is unstable in all, 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 all his ways. That man won't get nothing from God. Poverty is a result of instability. Oh, what a good word that is. Say amen. Because in order to prosper and to be blessed, you have to have roots. Roots have to be put somewhere. Because nothing just prospers overnight. Everything starts as a seed. If everything starts as a seed, that means that if I'm going to get anything, it's going to start as a seed and it's going to grow. Say grow. grow. Anything you get too quick won't last. We serve a God that is a God of patience. He put a lot of his illustrations of his character and mannerisms in agriculture, getting people to understand that I'm not a microwave God. That I'm a God that you must put roots down and then you must wait those that wait upon the Lord. You got to learn. Oh, y'all. I said wait. Because, because um, the enemy of the soul of man is presumption. The greatest weapon against Satan is patience. Oh. Did y'all catch the nugget? I said the greatest weapon against Satan is patience. The ability not to allow his pressure and temptation to move me before I should be moving. 
Why? Because the problem with people is they don't realize that God is a, is a, is a God of order. Say order. order. That means he sends blessings where you're supposed to have been. So if he told you to live in this house, the blessings are coming to that house. If you move, the blessings are still. Have you ever been in a new house and people's mail still came out? And it be still coming. Now you be wondering, is this person still using the address? Because the man's still coming. This is how it is spiritually. And many people move before the blessings show up. Are y'all there? Is this too much? Lord, please let me read one scripture so they know I know the Bible. I do know. Are y'all there? See, see, these, see, brother, these ain't the... <laughs> They ain't on shouting on that. This is deep. What's that word? Perspective. Introspection. Meaning I'm looking into myself and seeing the choices I made and why I'm where I am instead of blaming baby mamas and baby daddies. You didn't fall into that. I've been living 43 years. How old am I, baby? 44. I think I'm 44. I think I'm 43. I I may be 44. (laughs) But I have never fell into that. Never walked down the street one day. Oh, never. You chose. Be responsible for what your sin produced. Because it's only when we acknowledge our sin, we recover our soul out of the trap of the enemy. Meaning Satan set the trap. And the only way to get out of the trap, you know, like a bird trap, he said for you to step in it, the only way out is to acknowledge. Some of y'all look so funny because you're walking around dragging a bird trap. And everybody's telling you, girl, you're limping. No, I'm all right. Acknowledge it. Acknowledge you messed. Quit justifying what you've done. Say amen. Amen. Well, I was just going through something. I just needed that in my life. No, it's sin. It was sin. Well, if they wouldn't have did this, I wouldn't have. No, it's sin. You have to acknowledge it and you recover. So then recovery, listen, recovery is transparency. That means in order to recover, I have to reveal it. This is the reason why Satan works so hard with secrets to keep you secretive because he knows a person can't be delivered as long as it's a secret. So you spend your life hoping nobody finds out, which is the very thing the most high wants people to know. So they so they will see after he heals you that he's to be glorified. Well, why don't why don't he just do it? He's a God that like glory. I'm not doing it because I can't, I can't get nothing out of healing you in secret. They never knew you were sick. I need them to know you sick. So when I heal you, they will glorify me. You'll get the victory. I'll get the glory. Are you there? So he leaves you in it until you say, you know what? I don't care how you bring me out. I don't care if you bring me out with two teeth. I don't care if you bring me out with a food stamp. I don't care if people see all, everything. I don't care. I just want to come out. He say, up, oh, you're right where you need to be for this miracle that's going to change the rest of your life. So the question to you, how bad do you want it? Do you want it enough to expose you? Do you want it enough to quit blaming folk? Are y'all there? There was a prayer I prayed. I ain't going to even tell y'all to pray because some of y'all be sealing up to pray it. I prayed it years ago. And it, this, prayer, this prayer keep me on my knees. It wasn't no bad prayer. It was just a prayer that, of, like, Lassa said, Lord, just judge me severely. Don't let me get away with nothing. <laughs> Don't pray that. Don't pray that. He would. He did it. He had, I'm, I'm talking about. I know some of the stuff I'm going through is based on that prayer. A man is entrapped by the words of his mouth. 
I put it out there. <laughs> what I should have prayed. See, I was a young, ignorant Christian trying to be zeal. I should have said, give me grace <laughs> to overcome. I should have said, give me grace. But instead, I said, you know, I was just being spiritual. <laughs> super deep. This, you know, that's a, that sounded good. Super deep. I heard somebody else say it. I wish I'd have never prayed that prayer because he sure kept his word. So you really want this? When the Bible even says mercy triumphs over judgment. I should have just said, Lord, extend mercy to me. No, I asked for judgment. Okay. Did I read one scripture yet? I ain't read the scripture yet. I'm preaching about the Holy Ghost. I'm serious. I wasn't, I wasn't even coming today. I'm thank, thank the Lord I'm here, but amen. Okay, look at this. Verse, what I say? Verse 13. Are y'all there? Say when a man acknowledges his sin, he recovers. What is the first thing that they make you do when you go to AA. You can't even talk until you say, hi, I'm Steven, I'm alcoholic. You got to say it, you got to say it. Why, cause you acknowledging. Anybody that will not acknowledge is not ready to be healed because their pride is making them not want to have the stigma of calling themselves, even though their actions is obvious. This is what you are. So they, so you begin to recover once you acknowledge it. So all the knots and scars and head busting you got is because you've been running your whole life trying not to acknowledge it. I remember taking a young girl through counseling. Me and my wife. Notice I said me and my wife. You got to say that, Elder. <laughs> what, I wouldn't take that. That's, don't that paint a picture? Taking a young girl through camp. That sound like it was no, no, me and my wife. Right. And the Holy Spirit had already revealed to me she had been molested. I, the Holy Spirit, I, when I first met her, the Holy Spirit said, This is what's wrong with her. I knew that off the top. But I, but I said it to her. She wouldn't acknowledge it. I knew I wasn't wrong because I was listening to the Holy Ghost. I said, No, I know. And I know the sign you look like. I know what's it. She wouldn't acknowledge it. I got her to the point, brother, I had to back her in the corner. You know, you back somebody in the corner, meaning you talking to them enough where you cut off that way and then you don't let them blame that, you don't let them go hurt, you don't let them deflect, you don't let them get out. It's like catching a mouse. I ran her straight into the trap where she couldn't get out. And then, you know what she said? She said, I don't know if it happened. She said, see, and, and that's where the devil was. That's what I was after. The devil was using it's a spirit, I don't want to, uh, can I go this deep? Is this too deep? It's a spirit called mind block, mind blinding. She was, she was asking me, did it happen? I don't know if it happened. It seemed like, it, like I was dreaming it. I'm like, no, it happened. It happened. But who perpetrated it was so outlandish that it was very difficult for her to acknowledge it because to acknowledge it would have mean turn down the family. So I find, so, 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 so the wisdom of the Holy Ghost, you know how, that's why I say you be led by the spirit. But I said, I said, I'll tell you what, I said, who did this to you? Write him a letter. And she started writing a letter, tears start coming out because the, 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 this was, this was a real her putting on paper, finally acknowledging what happened to her. Talk to me. I said, we're not going to mail it. Just write it. When she got done writing it, it was exactly what I had said. After she, and then, when she, then I said, now read it to you. Because she needed to hear herself say, this happened to her. When she read it to herself, you could see something broke off her life. What no laying no hands. We didn't speak of nothing about no demon. Acknowledging her sin and if you've been a victim, you still went in, in the act of the sin. Just because somebody did it to you don't mean you didn't participate in sin. The devil don't play semantics. If you did it, you sinned. Amen. 
But when she acknowledged it, you immediately seen how she, she, she started to recover. She started to grow. She began to become truly animated. It's a deep word. What do you mean animated? See, a person, oh, is this, oh if I go this far, will I get back? <laughs> will I get back? I haven't read the scripture. Come on, say animated. When a person is traumatized, especially with something like molestation and abuse, if they are that way as a child, the trauma, the trauma causes arrested, arrestation, or what we call arrested development. Meaning because of the painful thing that has happened, the person begins to split from the person being abused. They will, stay, they, they, will, they will be looking at the abuse as it's happening to them. That's the only way they can cope because a child cannot decipher what's happening. So they lean toward their own understanding and they begin to, to disassociate. That's a good word. They disassociate what's happening. This is how people get split personalities, which is really just a spirit. Is this too much? And if, a, are y'all there? And if an adult or somebody that has spiritual understanding doesn't understand how to minister to them, to get them to, to explain so that they can understand it, they'll begin to develop another person based upon the trauma. Are y'all there? Then they'll get 30 or 40 years old and look in the mirror and say, who am I? Why am I doing what I'm doing? It was based upon the trauma Oh, but now they were arrested whatever age that the trauma happened that's the age they are for real spiritually Amen. have you ever been with somebody and you be like this person it might be grown but you, y'all get into it and then stuff they get to a child you be like they so acting childish like why are they acting because that's where they were arrested at <laughs> arrested means if I went and grabbed this brother and I hold him it'd be like I'm holding him where he is he cannot get beyond where he's at. Are you there? His body will grow. He'll even have experiences, but his spirit will still be arrested. So he could be 10 year old, but look 40. Because he was arrested. Is this too deep for y'all? Come on, say reveal. I'm trying to help you. Say reveal. Now, now let me read this scripture. Can I read the scripture? Say, read the scripture. (laughs) Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot, so everything that happened to you, God didn't do it to you. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But, say but, but, every man when he is tempted, he is drawn away by his own Lust. Amen. 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 Say every man, every. when he is tempted, he is drawn away by his own lust. The thing about being a human being is that we went to school and thought we were learning about ourselves. Amen. They dealt with biology, which is natural things, but we are not natural. Amen. We are spiritual. They cannot deal with the spirit of a man except to sedate and medicate it, which is why if you go say you got bipolar, they give you a pill. Trying to deal with a spiritual problem with a natural medicine or natural means. The Bible says there was a man in the Bible, there was a boy that oft, oftentimes threw himself in the fire and threw himself in the water. He was actually having an epileptic fit. Now, he, the, his father brought the boy to the disciples. And the disciples could not deal with him. So the man went to Jesus and said, listen, I brought my son to your preachers and they couldn't deal with him. When Jesus dealt with the boy, he did not medicate the boy or sit the boy down to counsel. He said to the spirit, come out of him. That's the way you have to deal with spiritual or mental problems. Say amen. Natural means cannot cross the boundary from natural to spiritual spiritually things have to be spiritually dealt with so the reason why I don't spend a lot of time with people telling me about mental disorders and schizophrenia because I know what that is 
it'll be easier for the person to realize something got a hold to me based upon my own lust or desires. Say amen. In other words, Satan don't waste his time sending you bait that you won't eat. But the reason why this spirit came, because it's a tendency in me. Because when a, look, are y'all there? Because when a man is tempted, he is drawn away by his own lust. Now, one of the problems is the Bible says we were shaping in iniquity, right? A lot of my lusts were developed before I was here. This is what the scripture I was using last time about the fathers can eat sour grapes and the children's teeth be set on edge. Meaning the last generation could have sinned while I was in the womb. And I came out with a tendency. I came out with a lust. You don't believe me. Look, stand a child in front of you, say, who touched the cookie? I don't know what I'm... They don't, you know, nobody taught them to lie. They'll just lie. They have a tendency to lie. You didn't teach them to lie. They'll just lie. Put two kids on the playground. They'll be out there striving and fighting and being selfish over a toy. You, nobody taught them that. Tendency. Come on, say my own lust. It's very important for you to know your own lust. If I know my own lust, I know where Satan is. I know what he's bringing and I know what he's coming with. If I know my own lust, say man. Your lusts are not my lusts. That's the reason why I get offended when people try to tell me how to get over my lust. They only saying that because my lust ain't they lust. But let's get on what you do do. You know, it's funny how you, you go to people going through something and see, all you got to do is if you did this. Yeah, it's easy for you to say because yours ain't mine. But let's dig and find out what you do do. Then you won't be so, so nonchalant. Are you there? Come on, say my lusts are not your lusts. This, this is why the Bible says pray one for another. Because when I pray for my brother, nine times out of ten, his lust is not mine. So I can help him get victory based upon praying for him and his lust, but then he can pray for me and mine. Amen. Amen. That's why how can you be on the internet and get healed and delivered? You ain't, this cyberspace ain't, it's not real. You need a blood person, a flesh person. Say amen. Are y'all there? Is this too much? So, 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 if, if I can teach you anything today, if I said anything about this message today, it would be, you got your own lust. Amen. I said, you got your own lust. Amen. You know you got it. It's the secret. Right. Nobody knows it's there. This is, this is the real you when ain't nobody looking. Amen. The tendencies you have. The poor, say the poor. The poor. That's your own lust. It was very great that James said this because if he didn't say this, then we would be blaming people for our lust. He said, no, every man has his own thing. Talk to me. Amen. Then when lust had conceived, so my lust will try to, uh, to birth. Amen. My lust is trying to birth sin. Is this, come on, talk to me. My, say, my lust is trying to birth sin. So the drive that I have, the pull I have toward doing wrong, which we call temptation, is trying to get me to do it, conceive it, to birth sin, and the wages of sin is death. This is why Satan only needs to use temptation. Because he knows once you listen, if you partake of it, you're going to birth death. Amen. Are y'all there? Amen. Come on, don't get distracted. You know, that garlic bread will distract you, man. <laughs> I got to go. <laughs> got to go. It'll distract you now. Stay with me. It'll distract you. I keep telling them, don't be putting that stuff in when we it'll distract, it'll distract people. Your stomach start talking. You blank out on what I'm saying. Come on, stay with me. Amen. It says, then when it lust has conceived, it brings forth what? And sin, when it is finished, it brings forth death. 
Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift come it from above and come it down from the Father of lights who, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Are y'all there? Amen. So, in order to destroy my life, Satan studies me like a hunter started studying a deer. He sees what food will work based upon what I'm already hungry for. How does he know what I'm hungry for? He looks at the last generation. Because the sins of the father passed down. Oh, his father was an alcoholic. So he'll have that lust because it's in his bloodline. Y'all didn't catch what I'm trying to tell you. Come on, talk to me. So, so my whole life, he's trying to put this alcohol in front of me because I already have a tendency or a lust for him. If I partake of it, I, I initiate the death cycle that took out my father. Did y'all hear what I said? This is why tempt this is this is why yielding to temptation is so deadly. It's not just the fact he wants you to do wrong, it's the fact that he understands doing wrong unlocks or opens the door for the sins of the last generation to flood your life. If if if, if this blood if this bloodline wasn't true, then the doctor would never ask you, you got high blood pressure, who got high blood pressure? Who got diabetes? They understand this stuff is generational, it's bloodline. Talk to me. And so the goal, see, see, see what has happened in your life as a child. Satan was looking at your life as a child and he was saying, how can I get the failure of, how can I get the failure of her mama in her life? How can I get the failure of his father to manifest in his life? Say amen. So he begins to know, he automatically knows based upon the sin of the last generation, what my tendency will be. Amen. The Bible says you were shaping in iniquity. He already know what, y'all don't, he know what the temptation, this is why you see uh, 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 granddaddy sold alcohol, daddy sold drugs, daddy sold crack, son sell pills. Keep going down. Talk to me. Grandmama was molested. Daughter molested. Granddaughter molested. Great granddaughter molested. It was in the bloodline. All I need to do is get the, get the lust around opportunity. And I can manifest the destruction of the last generation into this one. This is why, that's why even when, uh, actually Mark 5 is what I want to get to, when, 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 when the man that was in the tombs cutting itself and, and Jesus confronted the demons in the man, the demons said, our name is Legion, and they cried saying, don't send us out of the region. Let us stay. Because it's so easy to stay in this family. We getting so many dividends from this family that, that we don't want to lose this family. So if this is what happened when you got saved, them devils in the family stirred up against you and said, oh, they think they all they lost their mind. Whoa, whoa. How you going to ride all the way there? You done lost your mind. No, it's them familiar devils. that don't want to leave the family because it's so much easier because there's a covenant through sin in the bloodline. And all I got to do is, is, is tempt the next generation that has the tendency. And they will partake of the sin, conceive it, bring forth death in third generation. I'll take his son, see? And based upon the fact that his father partook of the sin, I have a right to tempt. He can't make you do nothing. Just tempt you with it. The temptation is based on your taste. It's based on your tendency. Did y'all hear what I said? See, 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 some people have a tendency to, some people have a tendency for, have a taste for certain things. You have a taste. You don't even know why you like what you like. You don't know why you like what you like. You don't know why. Come on, talk to me. Can I, can, can I bless you? Do you know why there's so many different drinks? You do, <laughs> you do know. They in church, Elder. I don't know nothing about that. I have no idea. 
What is he talking about? You know what he's talking about? You know what I'm talking about. You know taste. You know what taste is. And you wonder why you have a taste for a certain thing. Let's go further. Come on, can, can, I, can I talk straight talk? See, I, I, when I grew up, when I grew up, I didn't take after my father's side. I took after my mother's side. My brother took after my father's side. His side, they like, they had a taste for weed and drugs on that side. I didn't have that taste. Even though I sold drugs, I didn't have the taste. If I was to smoke some weed, I would literally, I would literally make myself so paranoid <laughs> because it wasn't for me. That wasn't, it, it wasn't my taste. I, I, but if you set a drink down, that was my taste. Y'all don't want to talk about it. Am I helping you a little bit? See, this is the reason why we, this is the reason why you grow up with a tendency towards certain things and you don't know why you like these things. But it's important to, un now, now, in, now, now, especially in our, you know, you know how we are as black folk, you know we don't tell the truth. That's why we all messed up because your grandma and them, they get a little too old and they, they get to all sanctified. Oh, baby, I don't understand. Been to church my whole life. Grandma was dropping it like it was hot. You know, grandma used to twerk. Y'all, <laughs> <laughs> you called grandmama 30 years ago, she work, 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 work. She be working. She be working. You catch her 30 years back. You know, but you know, before before the old, you know, before the oldness dropped the make everything drop. Grandma was stacked. Oh, she's a brick. That's what that's what she was twerking. <laughs> <laughs> But she ain't gonna tell you that. <laughs> y'all know she ain't gonna tell you that. Are y'all there? See, when we get older, we get dignified all of a sudden. And we do our children a disservice because we don't, we're not honest about what we were in because we don't understand the sins of the parents passed down. So the best way Forget giving my son some Jordans. I'm going to give him information about son. This is what I was into. Because when he, when I tell him that when, it's, when, when this enticement based upon the bloodline, when it show up in his life, he will know this, 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 this is, this is, this is, this is from my, my daddy's side. This is why I have this pool. This pool is not right. Say Amen. That's how you equip your child. Is this too much? No. Some of y'all wish that would have happened to y'all. You know, old folks are lie, man. That's one thing I learned. They lie. Lie all the time. They be lying. You want me to tell you a lie they used to tell you? That's your uncle. You had 10 uncles. How's all these cats your uncle? You know, because you remember back then when you was little, they made you call their boyfriend Uncle James and stuff. Did y'all 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 remember that? They'll make you call him uncle. This Negro ain't my uncle. Who is this guy? Well, 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 well if he's my uncle, then who John? <laughs> They're not gonna talk about. That's where the promis the, the promiscuous spirit got in the bloodline, because the sins of the parents passed down. So they're not going to tell you that because as you get older, you, you get more points for being dignified. So they'll never let you know. It's funny how, you know how you look at the picture book? All the pictures are looking good. And, and you be wondering, where was the club picture? Where was the... <laughs> And you know that they don't want you to know cats that know them. You know old cats that know them. They don't want you. To, come on, wait a minute, girl. You don't want to, on. And notice how everybody want to tell you because they be like, oh, let me tell you about your mama. And your mom be like, Shh. they don't want you to know. 
But did you know you're doing your child a disservice by not being honest? Because you do understand that Satan works on bloodline. Are you there? That's why it's important for your child to be honest. See, we've learned, especially in the black community, we thought that if we, re if we would reveal our sin, that that would entice our children to sin. That, not realizing that you are not the one that motivates your child to sin one way or other. It's the people to who they're around. The thing is, if I was to reveal to them what I was into, they would understand their tendency. Too much. I'm almost done. Lord, oh, is that, is that right? Lord, y'all ain't saying nothing. I know y'all, I thought y'all the garlic bread would talk to you in a minute. I'm ready to go. Y'all ready? Now, go to Mark 5. Oh, I ain't ready to go yet. I'm ready. If you got to leave, you can leave. I'm preaching now. I had an accident yesterday. <laughs> you think I ain't going to preach now? <laughs> I was in the hospital last night. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> going to preach to you today. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I promise. Are y'all there? Yes. Say, reveal my enemy. Reveal my enemy. I couldn't finish, James. Just reveal my enemy. Are y'all there? Look at verse uh, one. Y'all there? And they came over to the other side into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with a what? What did he have? Unclean spirit. Bible defined the spirit the man got. Who had his dwelling amongst the tombs? And no man could bind him, no, not with chains. This guy got supernatural power because of an unclean spirit. Amen. Say amen. amen. This is why I don't always judge what people do as it being them, because I understand the motivation when a person has yielded to sin or their own lust, they open the door for a spirit to enter their life. Amen. And then you begin to live your life out of the motivations of a devil. Talk to me. That's why some of the tendencies you have, you don't know where you got them. That little void. I, I, I can go. I can go further far. Are y'all there? See, you know what we really, we need a good spiritual enema, <laughs> spiritual clean out. Some some of you old cats know ain't nothing like <laughs> nothing like a clean out. Get you right and regular. A good enema and a cup of prunes, you, 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 you got to flow. But what happens is, is so many of us have, 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 uh, so many of us are, are spiritually backed up. These demons been in our life for years. Are y'all there? This is the reason why when you start preaching like this, you'll hear something. If, if, if spirits start talking to you, get out of here. Get out of here. That church ain't right. That preach ain't right. I heard. That's the demon trying to get you to leave because it's being revealed. The light is on them. You're starting to become aware. Why'd I come here? Come on. It's a y'all ready for me? I'll show you. I'm gonna show you right here. You ready? Okay, look at verse five. Always he was night and day, he was in the mountains and the tombs crying, cutting himself with stones. But when Jesus, but when he saw Jesus. He ran and worshiped him. The man, say the man, Amen. ran and worshiped him. Amen. The man, say the man, Amen. ran and worshiped him. Ran and worshiped him. But look at verse 7 and cried with a loud voice, What have I to do with thee? Thou son of the most high God, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Who's talking? The spirit is talking. Talk to me. Amen. The spirit is saying, leave us alone. We want to stay. This is why it's so difficult for some of y'all to come around true spiritual power. Because it's a spirit saying, leave us alone. It starts showing you the benefits and the, and the joys of fornication. So it's showing you the joys of, of living illicitly. There's a spirit saying, leave us alone. Talk to me. Amen. For he said unto him, come out of the man. Who's talking? 
Jesus. But remember, the demon just said, I adjure thee, don't torment me. It ain't the man talking now, but the man was the one that ran to him. Listen to me. The man full of the devil still, based upon the grace of God, had enough mind to run, even though I can't talk, but I can run. Ran to Christ. And when he ran to Christ, the demon said, "Uh uh-oh. The demon started talking. And Christ said, look, I ain't even talking to you. Shut up, man. Come out. That's why I argue with people. I don't go through whole Bible. I don't know that's the devil. That's the, you're going to get free of the devil or not. I ain't going to argue with you. Say amen. amen. He said, come out, thou unclean spirit. Notice the spirit didn't come out. This is Jesus. The spirit didn't come out. That's why I don't feel so bad. Because Jesus couldn't get him out at that time. But Jesus went into demonic or deliverance 101. I don't have time to do this teaching here. Say deliverance. He said, what is thy name? Very important if you get a, if, I don't, I, if you get the name, you focus the power. Versus you just saying spirit, you could be talking about anything. But when you say you spirit of lust, you pinpoint the power straight at that spirit. So he said, what's your name? Because Christ knew he got a name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee got a bow. So he said, what's your name? And he said, my name is Legion, for we are many. That's why I don't pay no, all this weird stuff people do, I know it ain't them. These people are full of the devil. Stop looking at these kids. These kids are full of demons. Your people and them, you are too. That's why you do what you do. People full of the devil and don't know how to deal with the enemy and they go into church and nobody's even dealing with it. This is not mind over matter. You can't teach out of spirit. You can't get enough knowledge to, 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 to make a demon leave you alone. Only one thing works, a command spoken in faith in the name will get you free. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why I wouldn't be going to no church where they patty caking and not getting free. The devil is a lie. Either I want to know when the man of God say, come out, the thing going to come out. I ain't got time to eat in no church plan. It's real or it's not because I'm not wrestling against flesh and blood. There's an invisible realm that Christ, when he walked up, that realm began to manifest in people. Them spirits start to cry out. Because they understood that this man has the ability to deal with us in where we are. First man that could do it. Say amen. Amen. And then he gave us his name to use that we can do that also. Make sure you go to a church that understands their authority. Say amen. Amen. Are you there? I can be destroyed in the street. I sure ain't going to go to church and get destroyed. Oh, Lord, I got to go. Look at what time, Lord. That's all right. That's all right. I'm trying to get done. For he said, so, 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 so what did Christ say? Shut up. Come out of him, you unclean spirit. And listen, verse 10, and, and he, the spirit, besought him much that, listen, that he would not send us out of the country. I told you they want to stay in the family. Don't send us away because we want to stay in the family. Don't send us too far. So look at what he said. He says, now there was, a, now there was not unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding, and all the devils besought him, saying, send us into the pigs that we may enter them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. He said, go. And the unclean spirits came out, entered into the swine. The swine said, we don't want you. They ran down the mountain in the steep place, and they all were drowned in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and the country. And they went out to see what was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was what? Come on, him that was what? Possessed and had the legion. He was sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Now, they weren't afraid. This is what's wrong with your people. This is what I'm telling you what's wrong with them. They weren't afraid when he was cutting himself. He's up in the, in the caves howling. Nobody's scared of the guy. 
But now when he's clothed in his right mind, now they're afraid. I told you, people don't always like you for your rights. They like you for your sin. That's why when you get born again, you got to find friends and people that are born again that begin to appreciate the righteousness in you. You can't be born again running with the same old people. Too much? I'm almost done. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devils and also concerning the swine. And they began, listen, and they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. This is how people act when you get free, bro. Ain't that something? This is how people act when you get free. That's why I never predicated being free in Christ with how people feel. Just be free. Say amen. Amen. I've been bound a long time in my life. I've been in some deep places in my life where I didn't know if I was going to get out. How dare you when I decide to take the correct answer and go to the master, are you going to become indignant because I because the master kept his word to me? How dare you? I'm just going to be free. Come on, say be. I encourage you just to be free. Yes. If you're going to follow this word, I'm, just be free. Yes. Do it God's way. Right. Be free. Yes. How dare. So you'll have cats in your life that, that, that you've been fornicating for 20 years and they loved you. The minute you say you're ready to get married, what, 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 what's going on? See, they don't, see, people don't like you for your righteousness. They like you because you're sitting where they sit. They feel comfortable that you ain't no further than them. But when you decide to do it God's way, they say, oh, what you think you're better? Yeah, I'm better. Because I got up. Because I got up out of this. I'm tired of living like this. I'm tired of living in these curses. We ain't never got nowhere living like this. Yeah, I got up. Yeah, I'm better. I'm better than this. Hallelujah. 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 Stand on your feet. Come on, say I'm better. I'm better. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm better than this. I wanted the Lord to reveal to me my enemy so I can know I'm better than that. I'm better than living a life of defeat. Better than giving my body up to be used. I'm better. I'm worth somebody loving me that will commit to me. I'm worth a ring on my face. I'm better than this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People get indignant when you decide to get up. That's why I don't never pay no mind to people. I just get up. They can sit there, but I'll get up. I told you my favorite scripture is when the one leper looked to the other leper and said, how long, will we, how long will we sit here till we die? That was my favorite scripture. He said, let's get up. Even if we die going over the hill, let's get up. I'd rather, get, I'd rather die trying than sit here and die. Because if I sit here, I'm gonna die anyway. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to pray. Hallelujah. I want to make a decision to do it God's way. His way is better. I've had my way. You know what my way got me? I got knots and scars proving I was doing me. But I'm tired of doing me. I want your best for my life. Hallelujah. And if you will commit that unto him, he will give you his best. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His best. Hallelujah. Ha- thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Play, son. Hallelujah. His best. Say his best. Brother, I don't know why I always talk to you, but his best is going to chase you. Best gonna chase you now. 
you'll see doors that wasn't going to open before they are open now. Because the Bible says, a man that finds a wife finds a good thing. Then he obtains favor from God and man. Things that wouldn't work before, they'll work now. His best. Give me your best. I want his best. Hallelujah. 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 Lift your hands up to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're just going to pray. Simple prayer. Say, Lord, I acknowledge my sin. Recover my soul. I acknowledge my sin. Recover my soul. Amen. Amen. Now, when, now, now the Lord's going to show you areas when he's ready for you to acknowledge it. Don't get prideful. Don't cover up like Adam did with the fig leaves. Walk in the light as he is in the light. Be transparent enough because he gets glory not by you being all that. He gets glory when people saw you wasn't nothing but he raised you up. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just sense that, that God is going to raise some of y'all up that you will be the light of your family. You will be the light of your family. Hallelujah. Come on, say, let it be me, God. Say, raise me up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ain't that good? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, that word, a word like that is what we call a delivering word. It'll set you free if you receive it. Many times we are too theatric in church. We want so much dynamic that we don't even realize when we're set free. I've been, I was sitting in church many times. The word that hit me and that spirit that was oppressing me just left. It just left. I got up feeling lighter and freer. Say amen. But you know why people don't get free sometimes, bro? They're looking for this dynamic thing of your laying hands. And all. No, no, no. Just, just acknowledge. You recover your soul. Now I'll speak to you prophetically From this day forth The Lord will begin to put People in your path That will be carriers Meaning people that will carry you To destiny When anyone comes into your life From this day forth Ask the Holy Spirit for discernment Show me who they are because he, the Bible says, listen, the Bible says, given it shall be given unto you, good measure, press down, shake together, run over, shall men give. If ever you're going to get anything, he's going to send somebody to be a blessing to you. The problem you have is that unstable problem of meeting people and not knowing who they are and not knowing how to either stick with them or let them go. So you need discernment. Come on, say discernment. I don't know about you. I don't have five years to waste with nobody that ain't nobody that ain't in God's will. I don't have five years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Father, I thank you for your people. Bless them with your life. Newness of life. Hallelujah. Fulfill the desires of their heart. Hallelujah. Let them know that you are the most high. You don't miss anything. You are a God that can never fail. And you haven't failed us yet. We have failed us, but you haven't failed us yet. So we just give you a, 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 a gratitude, a grateful heart this morning. That no, I'm not where I want to be, but I'm, I'm glad. I'm not where I used to be. I can look back and see I have progressed in my life. Hallelujah. We love you this morning, Father. Come on, in Jesus' name. One more time, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give somebody a hug before you see them. Turn and give somebody a hug.